Muslim person who would like to ask any question, please uh, let us know your name and profession and you can ask your question after that. Jazakum. Assalamu alaikum, sir. My name is Dalen and uh, I, I work here. I'm into sales. And I, it, I have a, a question which is a little out of topic, but it was something that I, it was a video I seen, and and honestly I did I did like the video, and I and I and I did like what Dr. Da, uh, Zakir Naik said, but there was a couple of videos which went refuting it, and honestly I didn't like the way people refuted it, and it because they refuted it with a lot of disrespect. So uh, I didn't really like that, but I just I just have a question, and I. <laughs> kind of wrote it down, uh, Dr. Zakunak, uh, yeah, uh, in, in a video a couple of years ago, uh, you actually mentioned uh, in John, uh, it's from the Bible guys, uh, John uh, chapter 15 verse 26 and it says, when the comforter will come who I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceed from the Father. Uh, there was a reference which it said is talking about uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, I uh, really don't uh, get that in which way, you know, because, you know, the Bible says it talks about the Holy Spirit. And I really do not get that. If you can just make that a little clear for me. And yeah, that's it. And there's just another word. On, well, there's another verse which is on that. But I mean, if you could just answer this. The brother asked a very good question. And as I'd like to know, as per the rules of the question and session, that the non-Muslims can ask any question on the topic, out of the topic. The non-Muslims are free to ask any question on, on comparative religion, whether it be Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, they are most welcome. As far as the Muslims are concerned, they should ask only questions on the topic. So any non-Muslims have any questions, this is the opportunity, you can come on the microphone. They would be given the first chance. We'd only like to have the name and the profession so that I would be in a better position to reply. The, the brother asked the question, and before asking the question, he said that he's seen my video clipping and he also saw people refuting. He didn't like the people refuted. And this is common, you know, when you start getting popular, there are many people who are writing against you. And this is common, but there are many people replying to these refutations also, alhamdulillah. The question posed by the, by the brother was, Regarding one of my talks in where I tried to mention about the mention of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Bible, in the New Testament, Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse 26, and I've given many references talking about the Comforter, Gospel of John chapter number 14 verse number 16, Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7, yeah. and Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 11 to 14, talking about the Comforter. The brother wants to know, wants to have more details, he did not understand clearly. In this reference I clearly mentioned in the Gospel of John chapter 14 verse number 16, it says that, that I have told my father to send a comforter and he will send it to you. In Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse 26, that when I go to my father, he will send a comforter who will abide with you forever. Yeah. Further it goes in the Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 7, that it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For, for if he comes, he will depart. Now for this comforter, there are criteria mentioned, the comforter. Now when we talk about this comforter, many a time the Christian missionaries say that this comforter refers to the Holy Spirit. Actually, the correct word in the Greek and Aramaic is parakletos. Paraklete means the praiseworthy. If you translate praiseworthy into Arabic, it becomes Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa now they have converted paraclete into parakletos, which means lovely or which means uh, comforter. Now irrespective whether it's paraclete or the praiseworthy or whether it is parakletos or whether it is comforter, both befit the Prophet Muhammad Now coming to the next prophecy in Gospel of John chapter number 16, verse number 7, the prophecy also says that it is expedient for you that I go away. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon, should go away. For if he does not go away, the comforter shall not come. For if he departs, shall he come. So if the Christian missionaries say that this comforter refers to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. The Holy Spirit, according to the Bible, was there in the womb of Elizabeth. 
It was also there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was alive. So surely this comforter cannot refer to the Holy Spirit, Spirit because one of the criteria for the Holy Spirit is that only Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, goes will this comforter come. Therefore this comforter refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Furthermore, if you read in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, it says that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. So here again it says that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He, 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 he. Indicating it cannot be Holy Spirit. And all that he hears shall he speak. Talking about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never spoke of himself. All that revelation he got from Almighty God, he repeated it, and he shall glorify me. And the only prophet that has glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if you read all these references and the references in the Old Testament and New Testament, all these put together refer to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, Hope that answers the question. I, that did just just one just one more thing uh, what does it mean when it said that he may abide with you forever ah, he will abide with you tell me he will stay with you forever now uh, stay physically oh. yes very good same have two meaning one is physically one is spiritually uh -huh. one is in teaching uh -huh. now because prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger after him no messenger will come so his teaching will always stay with you okay. he will abide with you forever that means his teaching is still eternity all the earlier prophets that came, Prophet Moses, his teaching was meant only for his people until the time the next prophet came. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, did not come for whole humanity. He only came for the Jews and his teaching was only there till the last prophet came. So when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, he will abide you with forever. That means his teaching will be with forever and you have to follow his commandment till the last day. Hope that answers the question. I'm, I'm, I'm done here. Just, just a last thing and I'm done. Sure, uh, it says, uh, uh, even the spirit of truth. Is there any other reference of uh, any other uh, person uh, or a being which is referred to as the spirit of truth in the Quran? Because, I mean, uh, there's a couple of my Muslim friends. I mean, I haven't really gone uh, check and gone and checked this. And I was, actually, I wanted to see you. So I was in a hurry and I didn't get time to check this. But uh, one of my Muslim friends who said that this uh, angel is Gabriel, that's a... Uh, Jibril, he was also referred to as the spirit of truth and uh, if so is that the same person as what what is the meaning of spirit of spirit of truth I've got various meanings that can imply mm -hmm. if it applies to an angel yes the angel Gabriel is a spirit he was Archangel Gabriel who was given the work of getting the revelation from Almighty God unto the messengers including Prophet Muhammad that was his role he is Archangel Gabriel okay. but the spirit of truth is just it means the person who is truthful. It can refer to an angel, it can refer to a human being. Here in the context when it says, He, He, He. But spirit? It says, He when the spirit of truth shall come. Mm -hmm. Spirit of truth means the person who is truthful. And it says He. A spirit is never called He. Okay. I have many things to say unto you, but He cannot bear them now. For He when the spirit of truth shall come. He shall guide you unto but, all truth. Uh, he again, spirit is... It, it, I mean, uh, I know a uh, spirit. I mean, when it comes to he, I mean, when like when like when we speak of the Holy Spirit, we believe that it's the Spirit of Christ, and and we actually refer to Holy Spirit as he. And now I don't say that, uh, like uh, I do not say like the Holy. I I believe Holy Spirit is a person, so I always did refer to Spirit as he. Fine. So if you Spirit of Truth can have two meanings. If it can mean a person, it can mean can mean a uh, angel. If you read the full prophecy, mm -hmm. what it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. Yeah. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that he hears shall he speak. Now the only person when he got revelation and he spoke, it was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ah, Cambridge did not get any speak. You understood? I understand. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall not speak of himself. All that you shall speak, he shall glorify me. The Archangel Gabriel never glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Correct? Yes. It was Prophet Muhammad who glorified Jesus, peace be upon him. Yeah, that so is. this again 
refers only to the last and final messenger that is prophet, prophet muhammad, muhammad peace be upon him and furthermore the other references of comfort everything all this talk about the person who is praiseworthy mm -hmm. the person who needs to be so, so praised the most just the outline so at, like if i mean if if i want to look at it from a, from an islamic point of view uh, there is uh, there is no uh, existence of uh, uh, the uh, the Holy Spirit as in the Spirit of God. No, Spirit of God is different. Holy Spirit is different. Absolutely. No, I'm talking about the Spirit of Christ. We there in Islam, no... we in Islam believe in human beings. Mm -hmm. Among the human beings, the best are the messengers. Mm -hmm. And 25 are mentioned by name. And five are supposed to be the great messengers. One of them is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. It's also Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the last and final messenger. Mm -hmm. Then we have the angels. The angels are different. So there is no Spirit of Christ, basically. No spirit of Christ. Christ is the messenger of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Yeah, no Muslim, the Muslim faith does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace I be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention which many modern day Christians do not believe. We believe that he was called the Christ. Christ means the Messiah. I don't know that. We believe that, uh, that he gave life to the with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. So the Muslim and the Christian are going together. But one may ask, where is the parting of ways? The uh, parting of ways is... Is, is uh, believing that... Uh, one that believes that Jesus Christ was the incarnation of Most God. of the Christians believe that Jesus is God himself. Yeah, we believe that. Or son of God, but God himself. God himself. Which we object. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me. If any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement from the complete Bible anywhere where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. Uh, it says... It does not say directly, but it does say that... Unambiguous, I, unequivocal statement. Yeah, I mean, it says that, uh, uh, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, when he says, except through me, does he mean uh, nobody else but him? This is a statement from Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6. Yeah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come into all God but through me. Yeah. So this is a statement. This is a statement, if you know the context. Mm -hmm. For context, you have to go to verse number one. Mm -hmm. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number one, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that if you believe in God, you, if you, you believe, believe, God, believe in me, yeah. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And in my father's house, there are many, there are many mansions, there are many, many rooms. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Yeah. And you. And you know where I go. So one apostle said, no, we don't know. We don't know then he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man coming unto my father but through me. Now this is the statement of every messenger. Every messenger at his time, he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto all, Almighty God but through the teachings of the messenger. At the time of Moses, Moses was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto Almighty God but through the teachings of Moses. At the time of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We surely believe that he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man came unto Almighty God but through the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. But Jesus also said that, the, that I've got many things to send to you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. Today, who is the way, the truth, and the life? It is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Today, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto Almighty God but through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But that does not make Prophet Muhammad as God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is showing you the way of Almighty God. So I surely believe in this verse. So in no verse way does true. this verse ever make you believe that Jesus is God. But, but you makes do you believe that that verse is true and that Jesus Christ... I totally agree, true. but what is the meaning of it? It means that Jesus is a messenger of God, peace be upon him. And I believe he is a messenger of God. And, and Jesus immediately after two, two chapters later says, I have many things to send to you, but he cannot bear them now. Bear For he went the spirit. That means he's telling you, he's telling all the Christians that you have to believe in the last and final messenger. As the Christian day to the Jews, we believe in all the messengers. You believe in one more messenger, Prophet Jesus. We Muslims tell you that you are a brother. We I believe know. in all the messengers mentioned in the Bible. We tell you, you should also believe in the last messenger which is mentioned in the Bible. That's the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We That's would. the request.
uh, we would like to give uh, the chance inshallah to uh, others brother do you believe in the last and final messenger do you believe in prophet muhammad peace be upon him i believe that he was a, a good man no do you believe he's a messenger i See, this guy didn't say he was a good man See, this guy said i have many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now for he when the spirit of truth you are so good man brother you are a good man so but that I, doesn't make you messenger <laughs> it clearly says that he the comforter will come mm -hmm. it and it and it, if you if you read in the old testament book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 18 book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 19 in the book of isaiah chapter 29 verse number 12 it clearly know. says so all these prophecies are mentioning about the last and final messenger someone else will come after me after him it has to be a messenger correct mm -hmm. so if you are a good christian if you follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to follow in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Others, you are not a good Christian. Wow. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And I pray Thank to Allah you. to give you guidance. Thank you, sir. Thank the most you so much. If we agree with how the Western media portrays the women's rights in Islam, we have no option but to agree that the women's rights in Islam, they are subjugated and they are not protected. The Western talk of women's liberalization is nothing but a disguised form of exploitation of a body, of deprivation of honor and degradation of a soul. The Western society claiming to uplift the woman have actually degraded her to a status of concubine.